Hey there, greetings, glad you're back, and I'm thankful for your commitment to listen, perhaps reading along, to the whole Bible in a year-long series. And so I'm humbled that you're still with me on day number 296. Today we have rich readings from God's Word in Ezekiel 21, Isaiah 5, and Hebrews 2. Let's turn to Ezekiel 21. Yesterday we saw that the Lord was quite offended with unrighteous leaders of Israel coming to ask for a message from the Lord. And his harangue against them was quite a long chapter for Ezekiel. And Ezekiel begged not to have to give a highly figurative message because the people complained that he was always speaking in riddles. Ezekiel 21 Heading The Lord's Sword The Lord spoke to me, Mortal man, denounce Jerusalem, denounce the places where people worship, warn the land of Israel that I, the Lord, am saying, I am your enemy, I will draw my sword and kill all of you, good and evil alike. I will use my sword against everyone from south to north. Everyone will know that I, the Lord, have drawn my sword and that I will not put it away. Mortal man, groan as if your heart is breaking with despair. Groan in sorrow where everyone can watch you. When they ask you why you are groaning, tell them it is because of the news that is coming. When it comes, their hearts will be filled with fear, their hands will hang limp, their courage will fail, and their knees will tremble. The time has come, it is here. The Sovereign Lord has spoken. The Lord said to me, Mortal man, prophesy. Tell the people what I, the Lord, am saying. A sword, a sword is sharpened and polished. It is sharpened to kill, polished to flash like lightning. There can be no rejoicing, for my people have disregarded every warning and punishment. The sword is being polished to make it ready for use. It is sharpened and polished to be put in the hands of a killer. Howl in grief, mortal man. This sword is meant for my people and for all the leaders of Israel. They are going to be killed with all the rest of the people. Beat your breast in despair. I am testing my people, and if they refuse to repent, all these things will happen to them. Now, mortal man, prophesy. Clap your hands, and the sword will strike again and again. It is a sword that kills, a sword that terrifies and slaughters. It makes my people lose courage and stumble. I am threatening their city with a sword that flashes like lightning and is ready to kill. Cut to the right and left, you sharp sword. Cut wherever you turn. I also will clap my hands, and my anger will be over. I, the Lord, have spoken. Heading, The Sword of the King of Babylonia The Lord spoke to me, Mortal man, mark out two roads by which the King of Babylonia can come with his sword. Both of them are to start in the same country. Put up a signpost where the roads fork. One will show the king the way to the Ammonite city of Rabbah, and the other the way to Judah, to the fortified city, Jerusalem. The king of Babylonia stands by the signpost at the fork of the road. To discover which way to go, he shakes the arrows, he consults his idols, he examines the liver of a sacrificed animal. Now... His right hand holds the arrow marked Jerusalem. It tells him to go and set up battering rams, to shout the battle cry, to place battering rams against the gates, to throw up earthworks, and to dig trenches. 
The people of Jerusalem won't believe this because of the treaties they have made. But this prediction is to remind them of their sins and to warn them that they will be captured. This, then, is what I, the Sovereign Lord, am saying. Your sins are exposed. Everyone knows how guilty you are. You show your sins in your every action. You stand condemned, and I will hand you over to your enemies. You wicked, unholy ruler of Israel, your day, the day of your final punishment, is coming. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. Take off your crown and your turban. Nothing will be the same again. Raise the poor to power. Bring down those who are ruling. Ruin! Ruin! Yes, I will make the city a ruin. But this will not happen until the one comes whom I have chosen to punish the city. To him I will give it. Heading A Sword for the Ammonites Mortal man, prophesy! Announce what I, the Sovereign Lord, am saying to the Ammonites who are insulting Israel. Say to them, A sword is ready to destroy. It is polished to kill, to flash like lightning. The visions that you see are false, and the predictions you make are lies. You are wicked and evil, and your day is coming, the day of your final punishment. The sword is going to fall on your necks. Put up the sword. I will judge you in the place where you were created, in the land where you were born. You will feel my anger when I turn it loose on you like a blazing fire, and I will hand you over to brutal men, experts at destruction. You will be destroyed by fire. Your blood will be shed in your own country, and no one will remember you any more. The Lord has spoken. Let's turn to Isaiah 5. Yesterday there was a temporary break in the clouds in Isaiah, and we heard the first hint about the righteous branch who was to come. Isaiah 5 Heading, The Song of the Vineyard Listen while I sing you this song, a song of my friend and his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug the soil and cleared it of stones. He planted the finest vines. He built a tower to guard them, dug a pit for treading the grapes, He waited for the grapes to ripen, but every grape was sour. So now my friend says, You people who live in Jerusalem and Judah, judge between my vineyard and me. Is there anything I failed to do for it? Then why did it produce sour grapes and not the good grapes I expected? Here is what I'm going to do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge around it, break down the wall that protects it, and let wild animals eat it and trample it down. I will let it be overgrown with weeds. I will not trim the vines or hoe the ground. Instead, I will let briars and thorns cover it. I will even forbid the clouds to let rain fall on it. Isaiah speaks. Israel is the vineyard of the Lord Almighty. The people of Judah are the vines he planted. He expected them to do what was good, but instead they committed murder. He expected them to do what was right, but their victims cried out for justice. Heading The Evil That People Do You are doomed. You buy more houses and fields to add to those you already have. Soon there will be no place for anyone else to live, and you alone will live in the land. I have heard the Lord Almighty say, All these big fine houses will be empty ruins. The grape vines growing on five acres of land will yield only five gallons of wine. 
ten bushels of seed will produce only one bushel of grain. Isaiah speaks again. You are doomed. You get up early in the morning to start drinking, and you spend long evenings getting drunk. At your feasts you have harps and tambourines and flutes and wine. But you don't understand what the Lord is doing, and so you will be carried away as prisoners. Your leaders will starve to death, and the common people will die of thirst. The world of the dead is hungry for them, and it opens its mouth wide. It gulps down the nobles of Jerusalem, along with the noisy crowd of common people. Everyone will be disgraced, and all who are proud will be humbled. But the Lord Almighty shows His greatness by doing what is right, and He reveals His holiness by judging His people. In the ruins of the cities, lambs will eat grass, and young goats will find pasture. You are doomed. You are unable to break free from your sins. You say, Let the Lord hurry up and do what he says he will do, so that we can see it. Let Israel's holy God carry out his plans. Let's see what he has in mind. You are doomed. You call evil good and call good evil. You turn darkness into light and light into darkness. You make what is bitter sweet, and what is sweet you make bitter. You are doomed. You think you are wise, so very clever. You are doomed, heroes of the wine bottle. Brave and fearless when it comes to mixing drinks. But for just a bribe, you let the guilty go free, and you keep the innocent from getting justice. So now, just as straw and dry grass shrivel and burn in the fire, your roots will rot and your blossoms will dry up and blow away, because you have rejected what the Lord Almighty, Israel's holy God, has taught us. The Lord is angry with his people and has stretched out his hand to punish them. The mountains will shake, and the bodies of those who die will be left in the streets like rubbish. Yet even then the Lord's anger will not be ended, but his hand will still be stretched out to punish. The Lord gives a signal to call for a distant nation. He whistles for them to come from the ends of the earth. And here they come, swiftly, quickly. None of them grows tired, none of them stumble. They never doze or sleep. Not a belt is loose, not a sandal strap is broken. Their arrows are sharp and their bows are ready to shoot. Their horses' hoofs are as hard as flint, and their chariot wheels turn like a whirlwind. The soldiers roar like lions that have killed an animal and are carrying it off where no one can take it away from them. When that day comes, they will roar over Israel as loudly as the sea. Look at this country, darkness and distress. The light is swallowed by darkness. Yesterday we heard the amazing prologue in the first chapter of Hebrews. Angels are nowhere approaching the majesty of Jesus, and Jesus was given many glorious promises. Hebrews chapter 2 That is why we must hold on all the more firmly to the truths we have heard so that we will not be carried away. The message given to our ancestors by the angels was shown to be true, and those who did not follow it or obey it received the punishment they deserved. How then shall we escape if we pay no attention to such a great salvation? The Lord himself first announced this salvation, and those who have heard him proved to us that it was true. At the same time, God added his witness to theirs by performing all kinds of miracles and wonders, 
and by distributing the gifts of the Holy Spirit according to His will. God has not placed the angels as rulers over the new world to come, the world of which we speak, instead, as it is said somewhere in the Scriptures. What are human beings, O God, that you should think of them? Mere human beings that you should care for them. You made them for a little while lower than the angels. You crowned them with glory and honor and made them rulers over all things. It says that God made them rulers over all things. This clearly includes everything. We do not, however, see human beings ruling over all things now. But we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, so that through God's grace he should die for everyone. We see him now crowned with glory and honor because of the death he suffered. It was only right that God, who creates and preserves all things, should make Jesus perfect through suffering in order to bring many children to share his glory. For Jesus is the one who leads them to salvation. He purifies people from their sins, and both he and those who are made pure all have the same Father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his family. He says to God, I will tell my people what you have done. I will praise you in their meeting. He also says, I will put my trust in God. And he also says, Here I am with the children that God has given me. Since the children, as he calls them, are people of flesh and blood, Jesus himself became like them and shared their human nature. He did this so that through his death he might destroy the devil who has the power over death and in this way set free those who were slaves all their lives because of their fear of death. For it is clear that it is not the angels that he helps. Instead, He helps the descendants of Abraham. This means that he had to become like his people in every way, in order to be their faithful and merciful high priest in his service to God, so that the people's sins would be forgiven. And now he can help those who are tempted, because he himself was tempted and suffered. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you that this book of Hebrews warns us again and again to not become complacent in our Christian lives, but to pay attention and continually grow in spiritual maturity. Lord Jesus, Thank you that you are our faithful and merciful High Priest. You understand us because you became like us, so you understand all of our weaknesses. Dear Lord, forgive us our sins. And, since you totally defeated the devil, Give us greater understanding and maturity to defeat him in our daily struggles to live pure and holy lives. And for those who doubt that they have been received by you, may they be encouraged that you call us my people and my children. And for those afraid of death, May they receive the freedom from that fear that you purchased for us and that is promised in this chapter. 